Hello! Today we are going to play this game right here. You're going to learn how to play it so that you can use it in your classroom this week. My name is Angie and I love games. And remember, when we're doing these games, there is going to be a freebie for you. All right? So if you are ready, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and we will get started. All right, today our game is called Roll, Write, Spin. It's a fun math game. If you are watching here on the live, go ahead and uh, give me a comment if you have any questions. If you're watching the replay, go ahead and um, give a question as well. All right, so let's go ahead and just dive right in because we want to make That is the goal, right? Get those basic skills, make them fun, master them. So today's game, let's go over and jump on. And this game, if you want the sample, the um, resource is down below when it says resource, free resource, and then you have to go down a little bit, but don't go yet till you know how to play this game, okay? And um, this game, if you want the full pack, you can go on Teachers Pay Teachers or on the Early Finisher stuff. The one we're going to be playing today has three digits. There's one that has one digit, two digits, three digits, and it's super simple because I don't do hard. <laughs> Slip it in a page protector. They can play it again and again and again. In fact, you're going to want them to play it again and again. First thing is, and I have it numbered here. So here's number one thing that they do, number two, three, four, five, and six. And if you see right here, this is a QR code that you can um, scan. And I made a video directions for you. So, um, so it, it makes it great for sending home if you're a homeschool mom, whatever. So they roll the dice, six. So then they decide and you can play this partner or you can play it individually. And I'll show you both ways. So they roll a six, they decide where they wanna put the six. They could put it in the 10 spot, they could put it in the one spot. It doesn't really matter too much. There does get to be a little bit of strategy and luck that comes along with this. So we've rolled it, now we're going to write it and we'll put the, red guy first, 466. Now we're going to compare it to another number, but how do we do that? We roll again, right? Three. Now, if, if it's a three and we're trying to go for the number that is the least, I'm going to put my number right there. But if I wanted to go for a number that was greater, then I would have probably weighted because three is a pretty small number. Hmm, that's kind of weird. So 366, a difference of 100. So we did that. So we did one, two is write it, three is spin. So this is a spinner game and a dice game. And um, I'll get to your comments and questions. I see some people from North Carolina, I would love to go to North Carolina. Hello, North Carolina sounds amazing. Uh, and then we have um, some people watching live. So thank you for coming. Let's go ahead and spin. So least, they come over here, least. So who just won that one? The blue guy, okay. And so you can see how you could do this a partner game or you could do this just individually. So you keep going and playing this game and let's just say it is like 623 
one, two, four, and this one was greatest, so this guy wins. Two, seven, two, four, one, one, and you did the spinner. Let's see who wins this one. The greatest. This one wins. Two, four, one, 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 one. You spin greatest again. Four, one, oh, I can't do zero. That's it's dice. Uh, let's do four, one, six, and five, one, two. Now, if if they get the same exact number, someone has to respin. Okay, that it, it's a possibility. It's usually probably not going to happen. There is a possibility though, and so least gets it. So then they count. How many did the blue guy or red guy get? One, two, three. One, two. You can see there's a few steps to this, and that's why I numbered it. And so now we get to decide who is really the winner. Is it the blue guy with three or red guy with three, blue guy with two? Because usually the one that has the most wins, right? But not in this game. That's what makes it pretty fun and engaging. Just like that. Oh, that was a cruddy spin. Let me try it again. Least. So, <laughs> least wins this time. The blue guy. So, he gets to number six, mark it. And then you play the game again. So, as you can see, this is going to keep them busy learning for a long time. If they, um, when they're done, they don't erase this part they just erase um, everything else and then they play again. All right, that, that is a very fun game. I know that there are a few steps to it, but let's really just think about this. Why do kids need to have like um, practice comparing numbers? What does it, what kind of practice does it give them? What kind of skill does it give them? If if you have a comment, you could put it in the uh, comments. But here's some ideas. When they are um, subtracting larger numbers, it's helpful to compare numbers when they're regrouping, right? Uh, I remember when I was a wee lad, a wee lass, <laughs> um, I would always, I had not a idea of the number sense of putting the larger number on the top and the smaller number down below, it didn't really make sense to me, right? Because I didn't have good number sense that if I have a large number, I can take away a smaller number. Now, of course, we know that when we have advanced math, that's not necessarily true. But now when we're doing the basics in kin kindergarten and first grade, that's something they need to know, right? So it's helpful for regrouping. Any other ideas? Amy, thank you. Place value. When they're doing place value, what is greater? If we had a, um, they talk about, right? And when I was like, there's a six here and a four here, or let's, let's do a, I'll jump over here. Hold on. Cheapers. A four here, a six here. Well, six, if it's a singular number, it's greater. But what place is it in? Place value. So that helps them to really recognize that 400 is greater than 60, right? So that is perfect. Yes. I love that there's a twist at the end two. Yeah, exactly. You never know. Is it going to be the the one that has the least or the one that has the greatest? There's always, you know, it might not be exact. So there's some chance in there. Usually it's, oh, I have the most, so I win. Mm, not necessarily. Not necessarily. So that's what makes it a little more uh, unique and engaging. It's probably like no other math game that you've played before. So, um, any other comments? 
So I have, why are independent games important for, get, for kids? Why are games, educational games, important in general? Uh, one, when I used games like this in my classroom, I had them all in a binder so that when they were done with their work, they could just grab it and have some early finisher time with it. If the games are fun enough, they want to do them during free time. They really do. I, I used to have kids like, can I please take my binder out for recess? I'm like, no, no, you may not. That's only for when you're done with your work. You have to keep it in the classroom. So I kept it pretty special for them. Um, uh, another thing is for like center time and workstation time. When you are doing small group, it's great to have a fun, engaging game for your kids to do that they already know how to do. I would introduce this kind of a game during like work um, morning message time, play it as a whole group so that they get to know how to play this. Because this game right here, even though I have the, the steps, this is a little bit complicated. So play this a few times before you put it in a station or in a binder for them to do. All right, any other comments? Got a whole bunch of people here today. Thank you for showing up. If you have any questions, just let me know um, and we can talk about them because that is what this is all about. I wanna get you guys some games that you can use in your classroom, but also to kind of get to know everyone and answer some questions. We learn from each other. So if you see a question in the comments and you would like to answer it, Please do. I mean, I think that's, I think that's great. We learn from each other. Last um, Wednesday, we had a game, Freezy Smeezy. I don't see it around. Freezy Smeezy. If you did not catch that, go back and watch that. We will have another live stream on Wednesday. I think it is another math game. So make sure you get um, here for that as well. All right, um, I guess that is it for today. Remember, my name is Angie and I was in the classroom for 25 years. I want you to remember that the creator of the universe loves you and I think you're pretty amazing too. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you do that too so you get notified. All right, I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.